Hey, this is Darren from Property Prosperity. I thought I'd have a bit of a chat t about something which is a bit topical in the news at the moment, the whole Brexit thing. I know, um, you know, the world's gone into a bit of a panic and everyone's all worried about what's going to happen next. So I thought I'd have a bit of a chat to people about how that's going to relate to the Adelaide property market and whether we should be worried or what, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing or, or what it might all mean. So before we get to that, I thought I'd have a bit of a give you a bit of an update on where the Adelaide property market's at. And what I thought I'd do to make it a lot clearer to you, I'd make it relative to the Sydney property market. So we're looking at Adelaide relative to Sydney. So I've got a little uh, spreadsheet here, so forgive me if I look down and, and look into a bit of stuff. So the median house price in Adelaide is around about $427,000 for, uh, for a house. And the median house price in Sydney is 890000 So that's like more than two times the amount to own a property um, average house in Sydney as it is in Adelaide. And then you think about, oh, that's because people in Sydney earn so much more money and blah, blah, blah. But when you actually break it down, the I'm just looking at the the annual, the gross, the gross household wage. So this is what you know, put everyone's wage together in the house. Um, the gross household wage after they take out tax is around about $59,000 a year for people in Sydney, and it's about $48,000 a year for people who live in Adelaide. So, you know, that's 1.25% uh, 1.25% uh, times uh, more that the people in Sydney earn compared to the people in Adelaide. So basically that means their properties are more than twice as expensive, but they're only earning a, like a quarter more money. So the question is, how are they affording these houses? You know, basically the only way they can do that um, if they need to be able to pay off their interest and stuff, is to have more and more debt, really. So, so what does that all mean, context-wise? You know, I suppose if you don't know much about the Adelaide um, market, it's pretty conservative. Not really much happens in Adelaide. We're quite conservative as far as you know. We don't really have many booms. We don't really have many busts. It just sort of keeps putting along over time. Whereas Sydney and Melbourne and a lot of the um, eastern states, it goes up and down and up and down and you know everyone's a genius when the price goes up and they're an idiot when the price goes down. Um, and an example of that, if we look at over the last five years, the median house price in Sydney has gone up by 48.3%. So that's you know one and a half times in the last five years it's gone up in value. And we look in Adelaide over that same period, um, it's gone up about 6.8%. So you know relative wise, that's not much more than inflation. If you look at over the last 10 years, um, if you analyze it, the annual change in house prices has gone up about 6.3% in Sydney. So, so that means it's better to buy, you know, than put it in the bank and you get 3 or 4 or 5%. You're getting 6.3% just by capital gains, capital increases in Sydney. Where in Adelaide, it's gone up by 4.6% um, on average each year over the last um, 10 years on average. So, so you can see there's not much has happened in the Adelaide property market over the last 10 years. It just keep putting along and putting along and putting along. But then at the same time, our wages aren't that much different from people in Sydney. So you then you're saying, well, what's, what does that all mean? So obviously we're quite conservative. We haven't really had a much of a boom over the last 10 years or so. So then the question is, you know, when are we going to have our boom? We know in you know, the banks are, are quite concerned about what's happening in the eastern states. The property market's gone a bit crazy. And they're really trying to control investment. So what they're doing is putting the brakes on that by increasing interest rates for investors. And then, you know, basically everyone's trying to make it harder for investors to go out there and invest. And so what that means, though, and that affects all of the the whole of the market in Australia. So that's actually putting the brakes on the Adelaide property market as well. So I don't know if any of you are out there looking around the Adelaide property market at the moment, but you know, there's there's certain suburbs that are cruising along pretty well, but a lot of the property market is just just putting along, not doing very much at all. So um, so with that mindset, in fact, um, uh, give that have, with that understanding, then basically we know the Adelaide market's done hardly anything over the last ten years, and and you know comparing to Sydney and Melbourne and Brisbane and all these other states, they've all boomed along. Basically, our numbers are worse than every other mainland state, except Hobart, which is not in mainland. But um, every other mainland state, we have you know had much less gains, much everything about Adelaide has just kept putting along a lot more conservatively than the rest of the states. So that means it can it can't do that forever. At some point in time, the it's gonna be so far out of whack, the house prices in Adelaide relative to every other state in Australia, then investors are gonna to start to realise this. They're gonna go, hang on, what's going on there? Why are houses so much cheaper in Adelaide relative to every other state in Australia? 
And what's going to happen is people are going to start to move to Adelaide because it's so much cheaper than every other state, especially if your incomes are relatively similar, you know, than, than Sydney, only, a, you know, 1 point, you know, 125% or 1.25 um, times the income in Sydney relative to Adelaide. People are going, hang on, this is a bit nuts. And I don't know if anyone knows, but Adelaide's a pretty awesome place to live too. So it's pretty nice to live too, lifestyle-wise. It's half an hour to everywhere. So at some point in time, the, the, everyone's going to kick on to Adelaide's undervalued and the market's just going to go up at some point in time. So how, what does that mean for this whole Brexit thing? So obviously the Brexit thing is another thing that's just coming. Hey, Elise, thanks for joining. Um, so this Brexit thing's just come on and um, it's created a period of uncertainty. So what that means is you would probably expect Adelaide's about due for a boom because um, not much has happened for so long. Interest rates keep getting lower and lower. They're trying to make it harder and harder for people to invest in the eastern states. So what's going to happen is people are going to come to Adelaide because where else are they going to invest if they want to invest in the mainland states? Now this Brexit thing's come along, created uncertainty. People aren't really sure what's going to happen. Maybe the stock market's going to go down and we've got the election on at the moment. It's going to create a period of just latency, I suppose, where people are going to sit back and just not do anything for a while, just to wait and see what happens. The cool thing about this, and you know, it looks like a bad thing, it was actually a good thing in the fact that this is a longer period of time where the market's not doing and it's not reacting to the fact that it should be getting closer to where the other states are. So that means that when when people do become positive, it's gonna be it's gonna be reacting a lot bigger way because we've had such a longer period of not much happening that when the market kicks up, it's gonna kick up in a lot quicker way and a lot bigger way than it otherwise would, particularly in Adelaide where we're quite conservative. So so what does that mean? The Brexit thing, good, bad? It, it means in the short term, it's going to be create uncertainty, which means that people aren't necessarily going to do anything. But it also means that people are going to hold off their decision making, which means that when people do decide to make a decision, everyone's going to jump on board at the same time. And you'd probably expect that the market to kick and kick pretty hard, actually, relative to Adelaide, um, normally how they how they have a little bit of a boom. So this is about as quick as it's going to have happen, probably. The question is, yeah, when is it going to happen? Who knows? It might be Three months, might be six months, might be 12 months, might be two years, might be five years down the track. You know, obviously, the longer that we don't have a little kick up in the market, the bigger the little kick's going to be. So the key for people is to get in, um, you know, the sooner the better, basically. Do the opposite of what everyone else is doing. So if everyone else is getting out of the market, that's when you should be getting in the market. And the key for you is you've got to be able to hang on. You've got to hang on until the market kicks up again. You're not really going to know when that's going to happen. So... That's my advice to everyone. Don't get too stressed. It's not really going to, at the end of the day, the whole whatever happens over in Britain is not really going to have an effect on what, what our day-to-day -day lives are. But again, it will, be in, it will affect people's emotional well-being, which will happen will have an effect on the short term. But over the long term, it's not going to have that big a deal. And so what you should be looking at is the fundamental, fundamentals of the economics, which basically means supply and demand. We've still got you know demand in Adelaide. There's still limited supply where people want to live. So if you're buying in areas where there's limited supply, there's plenty of demand, people still get their jobs, then everything should be pretty good and you should expect a bit of a kick in the market. So thanks guys for joining. Thanks for the likes. Um, if you if it made sense to you, then click on the like button. If it hasn't, then click on the like button anyway and I'll try and be harder for next time. If you have someone that's a bit worried about what this whole Brexit thing means to the Adelaide property markets, then click on the share button. I'm thought, sure they might find it interesting. And if you would have a question for next time, then click on the comment button and put some questions in there. I'm happy to answer it for next time. So thanks, guys, for joining me, and I'll talk again soon. Thanks.